Hey there, movie fans. Welcome to a brand new episode of FYC. Hope you had a great Christmas and hope you were gearing up for a brand new year, 2024. Can't get here fast enough. Joining me as always on FYC is the amazing Perry Nemiroff and the mighty Jeff Snyder. We are always talking about how we are going to revisit the categories we already talked about. So without further ado, we are going to do our revisit predicting the nominations for Best Supporting Actor. Perry, I want to start off with you. Like Based on our last predictions, which were Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, uh, Ryan Gosling for Barbie, Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon, uh, I think Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction. And who was the other one? I don't remember. Did we wind up saying Dominic Sessa? No. Was Ruffalo. 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 That's who it was. Yes, Ruffalo. Uh, I had Glenn Howerton, but I, but that's not who uh -huh. we had. Yes. That was way back in the day we had Glenn Howerton. Yes, we, we maybe at We had we Sterling had. K. Brown? Yeah. We had wow. Sterling K. Brown for America. I would, st I would still fight really hard for Sterling K. Brown, but. Okay, well. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Still. Jeff, what about you? How do you feel about uh, maybe uh, shaking up the predictions this time? I don't know if mine will, will, will shake up. I feel like there has been maybe a, a flop in the consensus overall, but I don't think I'm on board with it. Oh, hmm, interesting. Okay, yeah, well, this take is well. Without further ado, then Perry, who who is your maybe your new number one? But who was your number one pick for supporting actor? Now, I believe he was my number one last time. I'm pretty sure I haven't changed this. I'm going Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. I I still think that that movie in general is holding so, so strong, if not getting stronger and stronger with each passing day. And in particular, the conversation around his performance is like, obviously he is very accomplished, but I keep hearing like, this is one of his best performances in years and all that. And I, I think it's going to pay off with not only a nomination, but with him going through much of the season being the front runner in this category. I feel like, you know, Oppenheimer, the film as a whole, uh, just keeps getting stronger and stronger in like every category that we've been talking about. And, uh, you know, we're not even into 2024 yet. Jeff uh, Downey Jr. was your number one. Is he still? Where is he on your list? He is still my number one. And I don't really get what I'm seeing out there in, in Punditville, in Pundit Land, yeah. where yeah. I feel like some of the, the bigger names have kind of made Gosling the number one. And it's like, I think, it, I think I get it. It's like, it's just, we've reached that point in the season where we're bored maybe. And we're looking for a little bit of excitement. Uh, and people actually think that Ryan Gosling, you know, could, could win this award. Now, I think Ryan Gosling actually gave the, maybe the better performance of the two. I just don't think they're going to give Gosling his Oscar for Barbie. And they're going to deny Robert Downey Jr. an Oscar that's 30 years in the making because of Ken in the Barbie movie. So uh, I think Robert, if you like Oppenheimer, if you really love Oppenheimer, then you love that third act. And that third act works as well as it does because of Robert Downey Jr. So. Don't bring that mic too close to your face, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jeff, you sound great with that microphone. That that microphone is really the bee's knees. Uh, so, so yeah, yes, yeah. I have Robert Downey Jr. as my number one for Oppenheimer, just like the both of you. I think the last time we talked about supporting actor, I actually had Ryan Gosling as my number one. And But, Jeff, I mean, you make a really, really great point. I think, you know, Ryan Gosling getting his first Oscar, is he going to get it for playing Ken? I mean, I think between the two of them, they're both the front runners. Downey and Gosling are both, like, the most talked about in terms of winning but again, just like what I was saying with you, Perry, that with the Oppenheimer just like already being the top of the tops in so many categories, I'm really digging in its heels as we get into 2024. Uh, and that just keeps getting stronger and stronger. I really think that Downey, uh, I mean, he's just the one to beat, but you never know. There could be a surprise. And if there is a surprise uh, over Downey, it will be Gosling. Having said that, where Perry is Gosling on your list? I'm going to preface this by saying Ryan Gosling is number two on my list. I don't think he is winning this award. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think I think maybe personal opinion is coming into play where I'm someone who walked out of Barbie 
thinking that it was Margot Robbie who went especially above and beyond with her role. I thought Barbie was the perfect anchor for that movie. Her performance was was perfect for the tone and vibe, but also very soulful. And I love those qualities. I thought Ryan Gosling was pitch perfect as Ken did yes. exactly what he needed to do, but why I think I personally feel less enthusiastic about his performance versus some of the other people we're going to talk about is because I found Ken's arc in the movie to be just like a hair thin. And it's it's just making me less like, he's gonna go all the way and win an Oscar for playing Ken. I just, I don't I don't see it happening. I see I Barbie see maybe, winning, maybe winning in other categories, but like, I, I guess I'm getting more personally rather than prediction e, but I also think that aligns. I don't think he's going all the way. I think his nomination in this category is an absolute guarantee. There's no way he's going to get bumped out, but I don't think right. he's going to win the award. Uh, but but the thing is about Gosling, the range that he displays movie after movie, starting with you know the little poster I think Jeff that you got right behind you over your head is that Drive. It sure is. Yeah, tra Drive is, is is amazing, and you know, uh, uh, Lars and the Real Girl, obviously La La Land, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, uh, the Nice Guys. Um, it's you know, and this, I mean, you, you know, uh, oh, but First Man, I thought he was great in First Man. Like he has got such range, I and mean, he's like he's like a chameleon the way he totally disappears, and it's the way his performance as Kent was like. Above and beyond, he's so committed. But yeah, I just think that Downey's still the one here. I just want to right. say something else too. I, I I do feel like Giamatti is coming on strong and best actor, and I don't oh. think Oppenheimer will be blanked in the acting categories. Like if Giamatti does end up beating Killian Murphy, I don't yeah. think Oppenheimer just goes over four in the acting categories. Like they're going to give it to to one of these two guys, and and I think it's definitely going to be Robert. Well, uh, look, I, Giamatti's definitely gaining steam in Best Actor, but you know, I just rewatched Maestro again and was really blown away by Bradley Cooper's performance. I, you know, I still think that he it, that's going to be a really tough race, you know, between Bradley Cooper, yes. Paul Giamatti, and uh, Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer. Anyway, all right, Jeff, let's go to you, number three. Who do you got? Number three, what is his name in the movie? Duncan Wedderbush, something like that. It's Mark <laughs> Ruffalo. Something from whatever. poor thing i don't know what the hell his name is he was good though i mean again i didn't love poor things but you can't deny that ruffalo is is you know he brought his a game to this performance um he's funny uh he's a little sexy he's a little pathetic uh as well and um i think in this field he's a safe bet to get in yeah i agree uh he's not my number three but uh, ruffalo is on my list at number five perry where is ruffalo on your list mark Hi, ruffalo wow. is number four i <laughs> love him in this movie there's a great example i mean there's a lot of good examples uh on this list of this happening of like a super famous familiar face losing himself in that role and and that character is just so drastically different for him compared to like I don't want to say literally everything I've ever seen him in because I can't think of every title off the top of my head. But like, can either of you think of anything somewhat similar to this character in Poor Things? Oh, well, uh, you know, here's what I want to say about that, Perry. I think that Poor Things and Saltburn are, are, are definitely two of the wildest movies to be in contention this Oscar season. I think Poor Things is the movie that's more talked about between those two films. Although I, I think I like Saltburn more. Uh, I mean, I love them both, but I think Saltburn, you know, is more of the film that I just feel like has more uh, fully realized characters. I think there's a one note aspect about Poor Things that kind of keeps me from really latching onto it. But uh, to answer your question, no, I don't think there is anyone who comes close to Ruffalo's <laughs> performance in this. Um, so, okay, so Perry, you have him at four. Who's your three? My number three is Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon. And it, like, it, admittedly, this might be why I'm so enthusiastic about his performance right now. It's it's the rewatch I've done most recently. And I, I do find, especially when it's a good movie, I, I get like renewed enthusiasm when it's fresher in my mind. Hmm. The movie's really good. He's really good in that movie. And when 
Like when you look at his body of work in particular and just how iconic he is and the fact that you you do hit a point where you kind of completely forget it's him. That's that's pretty miraculous. <laughs> so yeah, he, he very much deserves to be in this conversation right now. Jeff De Niro, where? Honorable mentions. No. no. I know. I know. I'm as surprised as you. Oh, I don't. No. I have him falling out. Wow. That's, that's heavy. A bold prediction. There's that word again. Heavy. Really? It is. I just, I, I feel like passion is going to lift some other contenders into the field. Like, I, I don't know anyone who's really passionate about this in your performance. I think we can all agree it's really good and, and it's the best he's been in years, but is anybody really passionate about it? Like some somewhat, of these other folks that we're going to talk about? Somewhat, I don't think so. Somewhat similar to the thinking you just said before. I don't see a world where Robert De Niro isn't nominated and Leonardo DiCaprio isn't nominated. And I feel, I feel like more people seem this is just me making an assumption. It might not be fair that that they're like a little more lukewarm on Leo versus De Niro. So I see De Niro getting in and Leo getting bumped out. But like, again, with the movie so fresh in my mind, like they're you both know, this, really good in the film. This is what's interesting about Killers of the Flower Moon. So I agree with both of you about De Niro. First of all, he's on my list. He's my number. He's my number three. Um, De Niro, I feel like, definitely gave his best performance in years since The Irishman, which he was not nominated for Best Actor, but he was nominated as a producer for Best Picture. In terms of Oscar-nominated performances, I feel like this is his best performance since he was nominated for Silver Linings Playbook. Uh, and I, I did a rewatch, no, not, not that recently, but recently enough, Perry, and I, I think De Niro is amazing in this film. Uh, the interesting thing is that I think Robert De Niro actually has more screen time than Lily Gladstone. Lily Gladstone is, you know, up for lead actress. De Niro's up for supporting. You know, this I, you know, I keep going back to like the lead versus supporting aspect of this. Uh, for, for it's the not actor. about the screen time. It's not about the screen time, especially in a three and a half hour movie. Well. And also how her, how important her her presence is in the film from start to finish. It's one of those performances that's so good that even when she's not on screen, like you still like you still feel that she's there in some respect, and you're always concerned about how the events unfolding are going to impact her. Now, look, I I, I just think that she spends she spends half of her screen time sick in bed, um, so. Which is a performance feat. Can I can I add one thing about Killers of the Flower Moon? So, like I I'll I'll admit it's not that I didn't like the movie the first time I watched it, but it wasn't easy to get myself to sit down and watch it again. But I get I get weird at the end of every year when I make my my best of list and I start putting together like final nominations and everything. I I put like an absurd pressure on myself to rewatch as many things as I possibly can. But my question is, how many people are going to give a challenging three and a half hour movie another shot? And, you know, if the enthusiasm for other performances takes hold after one viewing strong enough and people don't go back to maybe get a greater appreciation on the rewatch, maybe Killer's chance is going to go down. But like as I say that, I don't see that happening. I keep hearing more and more about it again. Well, you know, the thing about Kills of the Fire Moon, like it's hard to watch a three and a half hour movie for the first time and go, oh, my God, that was great. It's, it is a lot to yeah, digest, yeah. a lot to wrap your head around. And, you know, at the same time, asking, you know, being asked to sit and like, you know, give it another chance, especially when when so many entertainment journalists, critics and pundits have so much to watch. But I do think that Killers of the Flower Moon benefits very, very much from watching it again because you're, you know, you're seeing it the first time. It's like, what was that? You know, but you're seeing it again. You're like, okay, okay, all right. You know, you're able to absorb it better. And that's why I was able to really go like, wow, De Niro was really, really great in this. I think of the three of those actors, I think De Niro's performance is the best. Jeff, what do you think? I don't think Academy voters are watching this movie a second time. <laughs> well, I think you're right. 
So, uh, so Jeff, you moved him off. So if you moved De Niro off, which I think is a mistake, Perry and I have him on there, which kind of, you know, makes that, uh, keeps him on. But who did you move up if, uh, if, if you moved him off? Well, I, at number four, I have Charles Melton. Uh, so I don't think he was on our list of five, maybe the no, first time. Um, and I do think that, he has made enough waves this season where I would be very surprised if he did not uh, make the, the, the final five. Um, I think he is the clear standout in May, December, and he, he grounds that movie. He gives it the emotion and, and the depth that I think, um, you know, some people may see it as lacking. Uh, and, you know, I think Oscar, we, we need to get one of these two young guys in, whether it's him or Dominic Sessa from the holdovers. I do think one of them is going to get in. I'm going to say it's Melton. Uh, I w- I agree. I I think uh, Charles Melton gets in over over Dominic Sessa. Perry, what do you think? Is Charles Melton on your list? Charles Melton is my number five. Mm-hmm. I think he's getting in. Um, at this point in my list, I because I did have Sterling K. Brown, and I'm I'm rooting for him. I really do think that's an especially electric performance that you know gives that movie like the appropriate well timed jolt of energy it needs in the in the best possible ways and i do want to see him get honored for that performance cuz i think he's deserving but i also think charles melton is is absolutely exceptional and i do think that you know the the course of the conversation has shifted very heavily in his favor and i think i said this on a previous episode too one of the things that's been fascinating me most about may december is how is how it feels like a significant amount of that conversation is being dedicated to his performance in it and not the very famous faces like Julianne yeah. Moore. feels like Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman are losing steam, whereas like Charles Melton is kind of like, he's got the firepower of all the May-December support. And I think that's really going to help him here. I, I agree with both of you. I think that uh, Charles Melton, while he was not on my list for this category, the last time we talked about it, he certainly has gained a lot of steam over the last month. And now a lot more people are talking about him. Perry, like you mentioned, over Natalie Portman and over Julian Moore. I would be perfectly happy putting him on my list if both of you have him on your list. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. Uh, But I had Sterling K. Brown on my list for American Fiction. Do you not have him on your list anymore? I bumped I do. him off. Oh, do you, do you really? Hmm. He's my number five. So De Niro is this, the one who's off again for me. Makes- I have Melton and Sterling. I wish there were six nominations. Left. Yeah. Yeah. That's Sterling how- K. Brown, let me, let me do my spiel on Sterling K. Brown. I mean, I still think American fiction c- could, could win Best Picture and possibly should win Best Picture. I thought it was fantastic. Okay, sure. And I, yeah, think, I, I, think, I think he's the heart and soul of the movie. I, I, like I think the guy, he's even better than Jeffrey Wright. Um, I love every single scene he's in. He's funny. He he broke he breaks my heart, uh, and he's just a very well respected actor within his community who doesn't really get the the best opportunities on the big screen to shine. This is one of them. I think he'll be acknowledged. He gets in. Mm. Perry, like I I don't know I don't know what to say because I care so much about all of the potentials we've put on the board. <laughs> like I I kind of want I kind of want the Sterling K Brown prediction to be right. I if I'm using my head right now, I do think Charles Melton has the better chance. Yeah. But this this is a particular category. Like I'm really eager to see what the SAG nominations are because oh. like I'm just dying to know which ones that are on the bubble should be higher up or lower down at this point. I- I think Melton has a better chance, but do you think it, it, it makes a difference that May, December is not really in the best picture conversation and American fiction very much is? I think it helps Charles Melton. Like like I said before, I think it applies even in uh, the best picture category. I do think that there is there is love and support from that movie, but because it doesn't have chances elsewhere, all of that might get funneled in his direction and have a better chance of pushing him into this category over, let's say, someone else. I'll tell you, I, as you know, there's always an actor or two, every Oscar nominations announcement that comes out of left field is a surprise. The one where everybody at the uh, Samuel Goldwyn Theater did Oscar nomination morning goes, ah, which is like the best part of that morning. 
Um, and I still think that Glenn Howerton from Blackberry has a very strong can chance of being that nominee. I just, I, I, I hope so. I hope so. I too. hope so. But we haven't talked. We haven't really talked about Dominic Sessa, who goes toe to toe with two people who may be about to win Oscars. Willem Dafoe, we haven't even mentioned, and you know this town loves Willem Dafoe, and he obviously goes for it in Poor Things. Sarsgaard won Best Actor at Venice. I mean, right. and no, obviously, you know, right. he's the, right. the the lead in his movie. I don't know even why we're talking about him in supporting, but we are. So it's like I think Glenn Howerton has a mountain to. I hope he does because he is the man. Yeah, and he deserves awesome. it. But yes, that does. movie's just so small. Uh, I, I Obama just, putting it on his top ten. If Glenn, if Glenn Howerton's name gets uh, gets announced for BlackBerry, which if you have not seen BlackBerry yet, you got to check it out. If it's it's an excellent film, one of the best of the year. It's like that gem of a film that just people love, but it just didn't get nearly as much attention as it should have. So my question is, okay, so we got Ryan Gosling, we agree. Ryan Downey, uh, Robert Downey Jr., we agree. Charles Melton, I'm putting him on, we agree. Mark Ruffalo, we agree. So that number five spot, um, Perry and I have Robert Downey Jr., uh, Robert De, De Niro. <laughs> uh, uh, I had Sterling K. Brown. I was kind of ready to move him off, but Perry, you have him on, right? No. Jack, I you don't. I, I have De Niro and Melton. Right. It's it's the fact that two of us have Melton, Sterling, and De Niro. Yeah. So we have to make a decision. There's each guy has two votes. Man, this is tough. All right. Ooh. FYC fans, what do you think? Comment below. Let us know who to pick. I know we're not live, but comment below and just pretend that we're live and tell us between Sterling K. Brown and uh Charles, Charles Melton, Melton, right? And uh uh who was the other one? Dominic De Niro. Session? De Niro. De Niro. De Niro, Melton Brown. De, De Niro, I, I, I mean, like, does he not get nominated? Because, you know, people think, oh, he's De Niro is just going to get passed over. Because Flower Moon's going to get a lot of nominations. I just find it hard to believe that, that De Niro would not be one of them. Also, I think Killers of the Flower Moon, I, I don't know how much this will really, I guess it will impact it. Killers of the Flower Moon, I think, could go on to get a SAG Ensemble nomination, whereas May, December will likely not. So that could, if that does happen, that could reflect just the significant amount of support that Killers of the Flower Moon will get in all acting categories. I hope Air gets a SAG Ensemble nomination. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing Air get literally anything at this point. I just don't see it happening. I, I, I'm going to die on that hill. I love that movie. Oh, but yeah, I think you're right. All right. So I don't know. I We all have a different odd man out, right? I have De Niro out. You, Perry, you have who out? Sterling out. I can't even I can't even make a case for my list because I don't want to argue against the person that I bumped out. Maybe that should be reflective of how the list should change. I don't know. Um, can, can we can we figure out one of these three to put on and then and then make it a, a conversation between two people? It's De Niro right. because it's De Niro. It's De Niro. It's if, uh, if he has two third place votes from you guys, no, no, no. Or four, no, I'm going to say Sterling K. Brown. I'm four. going with Sterling K. Brown. Yeah. I'm going with Sterling K. Brown. I think so now we're having just, a conversation. I think the movie just opened and, uh, you know, it, it is uh, like, oh my God. Oh my God. This is tough. This could be like one of the most. You know, could, do you want to do De Niro and Sterling K. Brown and say Melton is just too young and, and too unknown and, and he gets an indie spirit kind of thing? Like him and Sessa are both out? So the Sessa's veterans out. get in? Not Sessa, dude. Sessa's out. Sessa, okay, okay, you know. Okay, okay. okay. Paul Giamatti and uh, Divine Joy Randolph get nominated, which they will. And the movie's going to get Best Picture nomination. I mean, I just... I mean, Dominic Sess is very, very good, but and he and he holds his own really, really well with those two actors. But I just think that you know he's the guy who's like young. Although maybe he gets in because they all three of them. But Melton's the same other. deal, going toe to toe with two like Oscar winners, basically. I mean, but then then one Howerton just like was was freaking awesome in Blackberry, man. I'm, I don't know. I don't That's know. The difference. The difference is Dominic Sessa's sparring partners are going to go on to get nominations without a doubt. Whereas the two that Charles Melton shares the screen with are either 
on the bubble or I mean they're on the they're both on the bubble. De Niro. If, if, he's he didn't getting, get it. He didn't get it for the Irishman, didn't he? Did he? Well, he, he did, did not get nominated for best actor for the Irishman, but he did get nominated as a producer because he produced the best picture. Um nominee. All right, I'm going with De Niro. De Niro it is. Sorry, right. Jeff. De Niro's yeah. on. It's fine. That confirms De Niro. De Niro. All right. De Niro's okay. on. And then who's on between Charles Melton and Sterling K. Brown? I'll throw in one more factor here. And again, I don't like arguing against Sterling K. Brown being on this list. I also think that Netflix will run a stronger campaign and give Melton the better chance. That is 100% true. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I have Melton over Sterling K. Brown on my list, so I'm fine going Sterling, uh, going Melton, and we would leave Sterling K. Brown off. But maybe we'll add him back on when we do our final nominations right before the nominations are announced on yes. January 23rd. That is entirely possible because okay. we got a lot of award shows uh, doing doing award shows and certainly other nominations happening between now and the 23rd of January when the Oscar nominations are announced. I thought the nominations were on the 16th, but it's the 23rd of uh, January. So in that case, our top five predictions for supporting actor on this round of FYC are Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling for Barbie, uh, wait, 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 uh, Charles Melton for May, December, right? Robert Downey Jr. for Killers of the Flower Moon. And, <laughs> Man, and, are you okay, buddy? Are you stroking and, out on a And wait, who's the fifth? Who's the fifth? Why Robert don't I take it over from here? <laughs> Robert Robert Downey Jr., Ryan Gosling, Robert De Niro, and then we said Mark Ruffalo. Remember Mark how, Ruffalo. how he did? And then oh, I just read my list. So Mark Ruffalo would technically be our three because all of us had him. Yeah, right. My list. Right. That's what Is I was that getting right? at. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Just in that holiday, sort of holiday, holiday, holiday between Christmas and New Year's, we were no one gets Sterling K. Brown. Don't forget that I was here for you. I was the one saying De Niro should be gone, but it's okay. I, I defer to the, the other two. All right, so then Perry, read our top five because I'm totally lost. I just made it go away. I have Robert. It. I'm going to do it. Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling for Barbie, Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things, Charles Melton for May December, and Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower. Okay, you demoted Robert De Niro to the fifth spot. I made him. I made him the and. I gave him the and. Well, he was hanging on by a thread there, but Robert Downey Jr. stayed, uh, or Robert De Niro stayed on the list. Man, this is this is a fun episode. Um, so. There you go. Those are our picks for supporting actor. Make sure you let us know what you think. Comment below and uh, make sure while you're there, you subscribe to Perry's YouTube channel so you can be the first to see all of Perry's great content as soon as she posts it, maybe even before she posts it. Make sure you share FYC on all your social media platforms and let everyone know that FYC is the show you should be watching every week for all of your Oscars predictions and all of your Emmys predictions because we still have an Emmy predictions show to do before that show uh, award show happens on January 15th. Make sure you go to the insnyder.com to read Jeff Snyder's brand new newsletter, which is a must read. Make sure you watch John Roca and Jeff Snyder on the hot mic every Friday, Jeff, right? Friday. We, we switch it up. It depends. It's switched it. Well, whatever it is, make sure you go to John Roca's YouTube channel and check out the hot mic and all of John Roca's amazing content because those guys are breaking more news than the trades, and that is saying a lot. Join us next time on FYC. Now, 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 wait a second. I'm just going to throw this out there. I was going to wait till after we signed off to ask this question. So the next episode of, F of FYC that we that we do is going to be the episode that airs before the Golden Globes on uh, January seventh, uh, right? Yeah. Next yeah, time. but I'm 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 preemptively shaking my head to the suggestion. You know, you already know what my suggestion is. Maybe I was going to say, what do you say? We just do like a predict the Golden Globes. Really? I thought I thought, I thought we were, Perry was going to say, let's ignore the Golden Globes. <laughs> oh, Perry's saying ignore the Golden. You know what? I I, I get it. I think it'd be kind of fun. 
to do that. But if you guys don't want to do it, we'll figure something else out and we'll Let's surprise you. Let's find a different way to talk about whatever value they have. Well, I just think, you know, they're, 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 it's going to be a different show. It's on CBS. They have more voters. I still don't think that in terms of the credibility, it's, it doesn't have the Oscars or even the SAG awards, but I do think in terms of the exposure, it is worth talking about, but if you guys don't want to do it, then it is off the table. Whatever the next episode of FYC is, Make sure you join us because it is going to be off the hook as usual. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us all year long on FYC, for, for joining Perry on her channel, for joining Jeff on the and Snyder and the Hot Mike, for joining me wherever the hell I am. Make it a great 2024. I think uh, we all want 2024 to be a better year. And until next time, FY, see you later. later.